Um, I think one of the first things I want to do, because I really started the slide presentation at a super beginner level, but I want to kind of find out where everybody is and what you guys really want to know the most about. I don't want to start talking about domains and hosting if everybody's kind of past that. Um, also, I love to be really interactive. I think it helps keep us on track as far as me speaking to what you guys do want to know instead of me rambling on endlessly about a bunch of stuff that you don't care about or is remedial. So please ask questions. Um, I love to do Q&A. Uh, so how many people actually have a website already and you know the basics? So quite a few. <laughs> How many people want a website and want to know the absolute sort of first steps where to start? We have a couple of those people too. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to start there. And I'll just go through kind of the basics and tell you what I've learned over the years of doing it myself. Um, I am pretty nerdy, even though I'm self-taught. So I do, I have in the last couple of years gotten into coding a little bit, but certainly not to a level to teach it. But um, the beautiful thing with WordPress is they do make it really easy and it's very user friendly. I always tell everyone, I'm like, as long as you can read, I promise you, you can build a website certainly with WordPress because it will guide you and kind of tell you, even if you make mistakes, it will let you know what you're doing wrong, so to speak, so you can fix it. So we'll just get started at the beginning. Anytime I start building a site, I kind of do my basics first. So I want to think about what I want my site to do for me. The first site I built for myself was really more for credibility. I wasn't selling anything. Um, I didn't need it to perform any wonderful tasks. I just needed a place where people could go and they could learn more about me and what I do and sort of have my resume, my education, that kind of thing, and, and obviously outline my services. But that's all I needed it to do, and I wanted it to look good. So that being said, I do my keyword research first. Right, what are the keywords when somebody Googles it, what do I want to come up in? What are those words? And I have a couple of different companies, so I'm kind of all over the board with this, but I like to start with maybe 10 to 15 strong keywords that I'm gonna use throughout my site, throughout my pages, for titles, for blog posts, that sort of thing. And I like to have that done in the beginning so that when I get into the actual building part and putting my pages together, I already have my information, I have that guide. So keywords, um, always remember that your website is for your customer. Like I was helping one of my girlfriends put her website together a couple of months ago and she kept saying, but I don't like that, but I don't like that, I don't like how that looks. And I said, well, I want you to really step back and think about the person coming to your site. And you are providing information for that person. It's not, I mean, of course I want it to be aesthetically pleasing even to me. I want to like how my site looks. But I want to make sure when somebody lands on my site, I want to make sure that their first impression and their first experience with my site is really good. I want to be answering the questions that they want answered. I want to be telling them who I am and why I do what I do and how I can help them. So remember it's for the customer not for you. Also think about what pages you need and this is you know kind of standard pages home about services blog and a contact page. That's pretty standard pages to start a website. Obviously as my companies have grown I have added more pages. I have other companies that I don't have a blog page because I don't need one um, and we do different stuff with that but because that's one of the first things I'm going to do too once I get into the website part is I'm going to put my pages in place before I start inputting content. And then what do you want your pages to say? I always say have two to three questions and I'll get into some resources later about how to find out maybe what your questions are, what your customers are asking, what questions you can answer. Um, but that's kind of how I come up with content a lot too is I think two to three questions and two to three sentences to answer each of those questions. And that gives me a good basis to start from. I can always expand from there, and I can start throwing my keywords in there when I have 
the basics of what I want each page to convey. And I save all this stuff in documents, so I have it in my little website folder, so when I get to the actual building part, I have my content. I can start putting that stuff in. So hosting, domains, WordPress, and themes. So these are all of the building blocks, okay? So I always say it's like you're building a house and you have to have a piece of land to build your house on. Well, your piece of land in web world is your hosting. That's your land where your, all of your information is going to sit. Your domain name is your address, right? Every house and piece of land has to have an address and identifier, so that's your domain name. And then we have WordPress, which is your blueprint for your house. But when you just have your blueprint, it's not customized yet, right? You haven't decided what colors you want to paint the rooms and what kind of carpet you want and all of those important details that make it more about you. And that's what your theme is. So WordPress has some pretty amazing themes. We'll get into some more of that too. How are we doing so far? Any questions? Good? All right. So when you get your domain and your hosting, I like to do this all in one place. I personally use HostGator. I definitely can't tell you that there are a, a million reasons why I chose HostGator. It was recommended to me by someone that I trust and admire. Um, so I have always used it for years. I can buy my domain name there. I can get my hosting package there. It's very inexpensive. I think domain names are anywhere from 12 to $15 a year. I think my hosting package on HostGator um, I have what's called a business package, and I think it's $17 a month or something. It's, it's very inexpensive, but it keeps everything in one place, and it keeps it manageable in one place, which is nice. So some of the other ones are GoDaddy, Bluehost. I know a lot of people use Bluehost. It's a really reputable one as well. When you're choosing your domain name, it's important to think about a couple of things. One is, if you can, you don't want your domain name to be too long, right? Again, think about your customer. You don't want your customer typing for 20 minutes to put in your domain name, .com. You know, you want to keep it simple. You also want it to be memorable. And I put up here some, <laughs> some people that didn't think this through very well. I mean, do you want to walk around talking about your business and send people to speedofart.com? <laughs> You know, I mean, it's, it's important. Also, like, I do a lot of entrepreneurial stuff, and I always want to use the word entrepreneur, but then I would just spend every day of my life spelling out the word entrepreneur because it's a hard one to spell. So those are a few things to think about. I like um, Chooses Pain. That's a good one, too. And Gotta Ho. I think that uh, could leave a bad impression. <laughs> So yeah, those are just a few things to think about with domain names. Try to avoid dashes, um, again, because it's just making it a little more challenging for the user when they're going to put it in. It's going to be harder to remember. A lot of .coms are disappearing, obviously. We're kind of running out of domain names. .net is the second most popular. I think from there, I'm seeing a lot, and I've been reading a lot about this too in entrepreneurial stuff. They're talking about .co being really popular because it's so similar to .com. It's easier for people to remember. But you can go on any of those sites and search the availability of your domain name, purchase it right there, and start your hosting right there. A couple of interesting things about WordPress, 27% of websites everywhere are on WordPress, which I think is amazing. Um, I know Disney uses WordPress. Um, there's a whole bunch of major, major companies that are all on WordPress, and I think it speaks volumes to kind of how easy it is to use and how customizable it is. And WordCamp events are in 41 countries, which I didn't know. I love that. WordPress has free themes, free plugins, free support. There is an endless amount of support. Whenever I come up against something that I can't figure out, I always have my site up. I have Google open another tab and YouTube open <laughs> another tab. And it is amazing. I can type in the most basic WordPress question in Google and the results are endless. There's tons of support forums, even that are specific to your themes to whatever theme you choose. So this is your WordPress dashboard. This is where you kind of control your site. 
So once you get your domain name, you get your hosting package, most places will have a one-click install for WordPress. It's done in a matter of minutes. You set, go through your settings, you know, put in your email and a password and that sort of thing, and then you land here. So your dashboard is where you kind of control everything that's going on. Posts are for blog posts. Media is all your video, audio, images, pages, self-explanatory. Comments are when people leave comments on your pages or blogs. Appearance. When you highlight appearance, this is the drop-down menu, and this is where you find your themes. The ones that you see here, obviously this is just part of the page, but these are the free theme options. So free themes, you can do some really great work with free themes. I would never tell you that you can't make a great, really nice site with a free theme. Um, I just did one for my girlfriend the other day. I put it together in a couple of days using a free theme and their demo content, and it looks amazing, literally out of the box. It was so easy. Um, you do want to look around at different ones, and I'm going to get into that demo content a little bit more too so you can understand that better. But choosing your theme is one of the most important things. Um, when you get into premium themes, you have more options, obviously, to customize them. Premium themes I've seen as inexpensive as maybe 30 bucks and as expensive as 100. Um, they're not super costly. They do, a lot of the premium themes will give you more options also with demo content. So what happens is you'll go on and start looking at themes and what you see is a theme where they have really customized it and made it look amazing. So you hit download or activate, right, install and activate, and what pops up on your screen doesn't look anything like what the demo was because the demo has been fully customized by a really good professional. So what's happening now is they are allowing you, many themes are allowing you to download the demo content. So exactly how you see it all set up, you can go in and download that. So all those pieces are already in place. So far so good? All right. So this is the free theme that I used the other day. This is what the demo looks like. Obviously, this is just a snippet of the front page. This is what the demo looked like. This is the one I used the other day to help my girlfriend put her site together in California. Um, it's called Bulk. And it says Elementor and WooCommerce. Those are plugins that are required. So when you download the theme and you download their demo content so it will look like this instead of kind of a blank canvas, it will tell you what plugins are required to run that demo content as they have it looking. So for this one, it's Elementor and WooCommerce. The things you want to look at when you're choosing themes is look at menu placement, right? For this one, and you can change some of that in your dashboard in WordPress too, but this one has the menu at the top corner. It has your logo over here. It has this full page above the fold image. Those are the things that you're kind of looking at when you want a theme. And you can see in this, this is another theme style, right? Where the banner photo would be smaller and these are like feature boxes. So those are the details you wanna see, just what you like. And again, having that forethought from the beginning and what do you want your website to do and what do you want your pages to convey. Once my theme is in place, the next thing I do is I go into my dashboard and go to pages and I create my pages. Just like we talked about in the beginning, you know kind of what your basic pages are. So I will go ahead and create those and it's simple pages, add new. You'll put in the title of your page. I usually will copy in the body text. I will copy and paste some fake text or just some blurb of some sort so that when I go look at the site, I can see where and how everything pops up. I can see what color the font is. I can see how big it is. I can just see how it looks, right? And then I start to have a guide when I want to change something, I know exactly where it is and what it looks like so I know where to go. But that's the next thing I do is um, create the pages and then add the plugins. Again, when you download that demo content, if you choose to go that way, it will tell you what plugins are required and that information will be right there and it will be in the plugins page from your dashboard. So it will tell you everything you need to do kind of step by step. 
essential plugins. These are plugins that I think are super important for every pay, every site, no matter what you're doing. Um, everybody, especially at a beginner level, most people get really overwhelmed with SEO. How does SEO work? How complicated is it? I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I want to do it. <laughs> I know it's important. Um, so I love the Yoast SEO plugin. I use it on every site. It gives you, at the bottom of your page, it gives you boxes to fill in, tells you exactly what to do to fill in your title, to pick a keyword, to, to fill in your snippet that will come up on Google. When somebody Googles it, how does it look when it comes up? Yoast walks you through every piece of that, and it'll give you a green light, an orange light, or a red light, and it will tell you the things that you need to correct. Yoast is amazing. I also always recommend people use an image optimizer. So when you're putting your site together, you want to use really rich, beautiful imagery, right? And there are, again, we'll do resources later, but there are websites you can go to and get free stock images. You don't want to just Google and grab random photos because people frown upon that. So we want to use free stock photos, but really nice photos. And usually those file sizes are really big. So what happens when people try to go on your site, your site is trying to bring up all of these images and it can, it can slow down your load time on your pages. So an image optimizer is just going to compress those images um, and make them a little more manageable for the web when people go on your page so it doesn't take so long and it doesn't use up so much space. Ninja Forms. There are a lot of form plugins. I've used several. Uh, sometimes they can be a little challenging, but between Google and YouTube, I can figure out almost anything. Um, Ninja Forms is a good one. You can create some really nice forms, and this is for your contact forms and opt-in forms and things of that nature. It's always good to, at the very least, have a contact form on a few of your pages. Some people do every page. Some people do every blog post. Um, that is, is personal preference. But it is important to have some forms throughout your site where people can contact you and ask questions. Um, optimizer. I was using uh, W3 Total Cache for caching your site. And this is, again, more for the user than for you, right? I mean, it helps to keep you your site cleaned up on the back end. But it's also where it's clearing out old cache information so your site doesn't get bogged down. It does it automatically. If you want to get really detailed with it, you can certainly look up kind of how to do the settings and get pretty technical with it. Most of the time, I, I leave most of the settings alone um, to their standard settings. When you're looking at plugins, any plugin, always pay attention to the number of installs and it will tell you on their little square, it will tell you how many installs and it will tell you their reviews, how many reviews they have and how many stars. It will also tell you if that plugin is compatible with your WordPress theme. So I always want to know how many installs they have, right? How popular is it? How many people are really using it? And how good are their ratings and reviews? If they're good, then it's a pretty good indicator that their support is going to be good as well, right? If I have a problem with that, I want to be able to get support and figure out what's happening with my plugin and be able to fix it as quickly as possible. So I always pay attention to those reviews and pay attention to how many other people are using that plugin. Social share. So these plugins get really fun because they will allow you to customize a little more your buttons for social share. So your Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, whatever social media you have. Um, and when you get into some social sharing plugins, you can customize more how they look, you can customize where you put them, what pages they show up on. Um, and again, it's all kind of personal preference. And a lot of times it's how it looks. You know, sometimes they don't, everything doesn't look great on every page, too. But certainly you want people to be able, any blog posts or news pieces, things like that, you want people to be able to share that stuff so they can share it to their, their social media. Sorry, I missed that. Thank you. The next 
thing I would do is my menu. You want to put your pages in order, how you want them to, to appear on your front page, um, and as people go through the different pages of your site. Obviously, you're back in your dashboard. You go under Appearance and Menus, and you'll see all of your pages are listed in the box. You just check the boxes, click Add to Menu, it moves them over, you name the menu, and you're done. And that's exactly how it'll show up. And you drag and drop them to be in order. Um, you scoot them over a little bit to the right to create a drop down. So it's very self explanatory. It's very simple. It takes a few minutes, but yeah. Also, you have this custom links button down here. So you can make a page with a custom link as well so that you can link to it from other places. Your media library. Usually for me, I like to collect all, or a lot of, not, maybe not all, but a lot of my images and stuff I like to get at the very beginning because I kind of like to have all my pieces together. So again, when I get in and start actually building the site, I'm just plugging in information. I've already got all that stuff together. So I use a site primarily called pixabay.com. They do free stock images. They have a ton of stuff available on there. It's kind of crazy how many photographs are on there. But I find really great images on there. Yes, ma'am. Pixabay. Pixabay. P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. That was your question too? <laughs> I was going to ask how you tell it. Yeah. Yeah, it's an X. Um, also, it's another thing that you can go into Google and put free stock photos, and there's a ton of sites that will come up. Yes, sir. Do you ever have any problems uploading photos? Because I feel like whenever we do that, we just get a lot of spins. I have not had any problems with that. I have, I have had where I'll get an HTTP error just on that page, but if I go out and come back, my image is there and it's okay. So I have not struggled with that. Are you talking about just using the free stock image site or images in general? Yeah, I can't. I have not had that experience. And I always have, I always have an image optimizer plugin installed. So as soon as I throw an image into my media library, it is automatically optimizing it. I have to make it easier and faster. I have done resizing photos. It's another thing. Go to Google, free photo resize. A million sites will come up. You upload your picture. I, put, I always put 50% smaller. It does it in a matter of seconds. It's really simple. Do you uh, recommend using with watermarks or without? Without. Okay. Because if they have watermarks, you don't have permission to use them. You can find that. Yeah. It's really easy to get out of watermarks. Yes, but you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> no, definitely without. Definitely without. And I used to think too, like, I would just Google photos and throw them on my website, right? First of all, they were usually not great quality anyway, but I would think, well, it's just my little website. Like, nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to know. But it's just better to do it right from the beginning. Like, I would rather just have the permissions and have the better photos, too, especially if it's free. And the screenshots, so many times, it's so blurry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So I will look at whatever the theme, whatever box I'm putting a photo in, I will see what size that is. Or if I'm doing feature boxes and I want them to all be the same, then I'll figure out what those dimensions are and make them all the same. But you can do that when you put your photo in. So it says edit image. You can do all kinds of things with edit image. You can crop. You can rotate, pretty basic things, but you can also change the dimensions of those photos in there. Um, this is another reason I say have your keywords and that kind of stuff figured out in the beginning, because when you start putting your pictures in, you want to give them titles that are your keywords as well. Because remember, Google 
can't see pictures. Google can only read text. So you want to make sure that you are naming your images so that Google knows what it is and what it's looking for and see how it fits in the realm of your website and who you are and what you're doing. And then you can link photos too, which can get kind of fun. I have a question. Yes, sir? The image optimizer, I understand that you wanted a smaller file size for you know, the user. Um, but oftentimes people like to click on it to see it in more detail. So does that prevent No. And that might be different with, with each theme as well, if you can click on the image to make it larger. Um, would probably be dependent on the theme, but certainly optimizing it will not stand in the way. File size, yeah. Yeah, because certainly if you blog, if you blog on a weekly basis and you're adding images, I mean, over the span of time, your, your site's going to be pretty image heavy. There's going to be a lot going on. So you definitely want to have them where it's manageable, where people, because people won't stay. If I try to go on your site and it's not popping up pretty quickly, I'm going to leave and go to another site. So you don't want your page load times to be low. You want them to be fast. SEO. All right, this is where we're going to put our keywords into place. Again, I say, just from my own research, you don't want to pack every page and every paragraph with so many keywords that it starts to be ridiculous or sound ridiculous. And you will get penalized for it as well. So you want to use keywords, have a couple of different variations of keywords that you're using. Um, you can certainly get into long tail keywords, which sometimes are easier to manage than just specific one word keywords. Um, but you want to kind of sprinkle those keywords throughout your page, throughout your content. Again, with your images, right? Make sure that you're naming your images and using your keywords for that stuff. Um, in all of your text, text boxes, feature boxes, whatever you have, use your keywords, but it needs to be in normal language exactly the way someone would speak. You know, you'll have people trying to cram keywords into pages and it starts like your sentences, their sentences don't make sense because they're just trying to cram keywords. So you want it to be in normal speak. It has to make sense. Um, and then at the bottom of all of your pages, of course, make sure you use that SEO plugin. Like I said, I always use Yoast. I love Yoast. But at the bottom of every page, you want to make sure that you fill that in. Again, it will tell you exactly what you need to do. It will tell you exactly what changes to make. It gives you a green light when you're making your, your title for your page or your post. As you're typing, it has a red bar that when it's a good length, it turns green. And you know that's a good place to stop. And it shows it in real time as you're doing it too. So you can see your snippet as it will appear on Google. So you can see when your words get cut off. Again, it will turn red if you get too many words. But you can see exactly how that looks for a user when they do a search. Doing, if you are location specific, you want to make sure that your location is a part of your keyword strategy too. You know, like I'm, I started my career as a life coach, and I do um, I do life coaching packages with high functioning executives, athletes, stuff like that. But I was I've been very specific to Kansas City for a long time, so I always make sure I use Kansas City. You know, Kansas City Life Coach, Premier Life Coach Kansas City, Angela Pugh Kansas City. You know, you want to geotag that stuff too, because if you are really in a specific region, you want to show up for your region. And that's keywords. Resources. Again, do not get overwhelmed. Like I I swear this is building a website is much easier at a beginner stage. You can elaborate on things and get better as you go. But to get started is just not as intimidating, I think, as most people feel it is, especially with how well the themes are, how well what they have available, how user friendly they are, how much you can customize them. It really is a very simple process as long as you don't get intimidated and overwhelmed. And you have Google and YouTube. I feel like with Google and YouTube, I can do almost anything because there's a video for it. 
I even tried to tell the airline I could fly the plane. I said, just let me YouTube it for a minute. We'll get it done. <laughs> That's me. So we are at questions. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. All right. I hate to but this is it. Sure. Well, I pick one of these things. What happens to all my information that's already on? Does it get transformed into the new thing? It will migrate. However, you will definitely have to make some corrections. It's not going to migrate perfectly. Okay. Right. So I'm not going to lose it. Well, you, I would say back it up. Okay. And there are plugins for that too. Um, and when you need plugins, there's a plugin for almost everything. Like we always say, there's an app for that. There's a plugin for that too. And when you go into your dashboard to plugins, add new, there's a search bar. And you just search whatever plugin you need. Again, make sure you look at the reviews and the number of installs. Um, but yeah, there's a plugin for almost everything. So I would back everything up. You don't want to lose your data. I would probably even recommend talking to one of the more experienced people that will be here over the next couple of days and asking them a really good way to do that because you don't want to lose your data for sure. But when you do a new theme, a lot of that stuff will migrate. You will have to make corrections though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. Oh, you did? Hang on one second. Go ahead. But for one firm? One entity. I would say, I mean, I would still say one site, but again, I would encourage you to find one of the lovely people that would probably be able to answer that better for you. Because I don't want to, I don't want to steer you wrong, and that probably is, that probably is above my pay grade there. <laughs> Okay, say that again from the beginning. A page builder? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, for me, I'm going to start where I'm comfortable. So I'm going to start with what I feel like I can navigate effectively and figure out effectively, um, which is why I always started with themes and page builders, because it is so self-explanatory, and, and I feel like I can get through that really easily. Again, especially with Google and YouTube, you can figure it out pretty easily. Okay, now you I would say I have done some courses on Udemy and they're pretty good. I mean, it can't hurt, but what part are you wanting to get deeper in? Are you wanting to get deeper in coding or are you just wanting to get deeper into building a site? Yeah, I think Udemy has great courses, especially affordable. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
Lynda.com has great courses. I love Lynda.com, but you usually have to pay for them. So yeah, having it through the library is a great resource. L-Y-N-D-A. Yes, ma'am. There are a lot of themes, especially when you get into the premiums, there are a lot of themes that are highly customizable, especially with page builders. You can get things to be how you want them to look for the most part. Some of that you will have to let go of, uh, and I've certainly run into that myself, right, where I have it so specific in my head how I want it to look, but I am not at the level to customize it to a point to do it, right? But with a good theme and a page builder, you can do a lot. Now, when it comes to sidebars, is what you're talking about, something on the side, your footer, some of that is more customizable with widgets, which is in the dashboard. There's a footer widget, a sidebar widget, and they have all kinds of options for information you can include in there. You also, when you are creating your pages, you have an option to give your page a basic layout, right? So there's a default layout, usually there's a home page layout if you want it to match that. So you can do a lot. You can do a lot at a beginner level. Um, but I think when you get into, I use Avada a lot, which is a premium theme, it's $60. It is, it's crazy how many options you have and things that you can do. And again, it depends on how much time you want to spend on it. I, I mean, I'm a super nerd, so I will spend a hundred hours figuring things out and being in the back of my website, learning all that stuff because I love it. Um, but it depends on how you feel about that and how much time you want to spend on it or how simple you want it to be. But I would say between all those options, you can customize things pretty nicely. What did you say? Avada, A-V-A-D-A. I think it is, I think it is the number one most downloaded theme on WordPress. And that's another piece with Avada, when you go on there it's $60 and they have these endless uh, demos already set up where again you can download that demo content, you can pick one that's already put together that you like how it looks and download that demo content um, so that your site will look exactly that way. Yes ma'am. certainly can. I would not have all of those pages like available in the menu, you know, but I definitely have pages where my keywords and my content are very, very specific and targeted and maybe you link to them from another page. You know, maybe there's a click here for this on, on a blog and it links to that page, but I wouldn't have all those available in the menu. 
But yeah, and then I would also get into doing some blog posts and things like that. You want to have, your, your content needs to be changing. Like Google and, and the bots need to have content to search, to know what you're doing and what's going on, and that your site is still active. Um, so it's good to have fresh content pretty regular too. Yes. Well, because you can do blog posts for different things specific to your area. So you can do as many blog posts as you want, but then you can start really honing in. That's what's going to start boosting your search engines as you have those keywords throughout your site. And then also I would say another part of that is maybe you partner with other people in those specific cities that have a coinciding sort of business and you guest post where it links back to your site and those sort of things. I mean, it gets really intricate when you get into those things. But yeah, I wouldn't have all those pages obviously in my main menu, but it's certainly okay to have those pages and have a specific keyword for each of those pages in, in those different cities. You also want to have on, on each page, you want to have one heading tag. So your major header, you want to have your keyword for that page in too. You should only have one heading tag. You can have as many H2s, H3s, whatever as you want. But yes, ma'am. I couldn't say if it's good or bad. Um, there are, I kind of go back and forth. Again, I think it depends on really what you want your site to do for you. So when, in the very beginning, my site, again, was just for credibility. I just wanted a place where people could go to learn more about me. I didn't need it to do anything. So I wasn't interested in comments and things like that. Everybody could find me on Facebook and those things. Um, I know when it, when you get more into SEO strategy and things like that, that stuff becomes much more important. When you get deeper into those topics, that stuff becomes important and you do want to be engaging because that's going to build your followership. I'm going to get you in the back there. I have a lot of resources. <laughs> um, so I think it's really good to answer questions for your customers. Like who's going to be landing on your site and what questions can you answer for them? So one of my favorite websites is called answerthepublic.com. And you go to answer the public and you put in a keyword and it literally will give you this crazy amount of information of all different questions surrounding that keyword. And um, there's another good one called Suvel, which is S-O-O-V like Victor, L-E dot com. I think most people are familiar with Quora. Quora is a good one to find questions. Um, I love Neil Patel is one of my favorite people to follow and he has, um, hang on, I have a list of resources here. His is ubersuggest.com and that's a good one for keywords. Uber suggest. I think too one of the best things you can do is think about the keyword that you want to come up for and do individual Google searches on that and see who comes up, right? So I own also an addiction treatment center. So I might go in Google and put addiction treatment and see what other people come up and what keywords they're using and I can start using those. Then I go to the bottom of the page at Google and I look at related searches because to me it just makes sense if it was important enough to Google to put it at the bottom of the page, it's probably important enough for me to pay attention to. And those are some more long tail keywords, just longer, more sentence form and stuff like that. So I utilize all that stuff. Yes, ma'am. That's so personal preference. Um, 
So for me, how I got into all of this is in the very beginning of my career, I couldn't afford to have a website, right? So I worked really hard and scraped together my money. And I went and I hired these guys to do my site and they were fantastic. It was $4,500. And I thought I communicated really clearly like what I wanted and what my expectations were. And the site they gave me, literally I cried. Um, so that's when I just went home and I thought, well, I'm not going to use this thing that they gave me. So I just decided to figure it out on my own and figure out how to build it. Now, when it comes to my companies as they grow and scale, obviously I'm not going to be managing the website. You know what I mean? So at that point, once it becomes more intricate, I definitely want a professional person to do it. When it comes to, you know, um, members, member sites and member logins, when it comes to any buying, selling products on my website, like that is stuff that I am not equipped to do well and protect the people that are interacting with me. I would definitely go professional at that point. Yes, ma'am. So I like a general rule of blogging once a week. The truth is I'm changing, I, I tweak my site pretty regularly, even if it's just a sentence or two here or there. You know, like I'll be talking to somebody and they'll say a sentence and I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounded really good, you know, and I'll go and, and change it on my site. Um, I love to change pictures and name them, you know, with those titles and keywords. I think once a week is good to keep it fresh. Um, but yeah, I, I like to do it pretty regular. When somebody comments, as far as interacting with people, I try to get to those comments really quickly because you don't want to leave people hanging too long. How are we doing on time? Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't know. I think you would have to take the word easily out of there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that it would be easily done. But you know what? Probably one of the developers could probably tell you an easy way to do that because I know they can figure it out. Um, I think it's more, what I really pay attention to is styling. You know, I, I want a theme that is fresh, that it is appealing, that is concise, that's easy to read, easy to navigate. I mean, you really want to make it as simple as possible for the person landing on your page. And you can, listen, picking themes will drive you crazy because there are so many. There really are. There are so many to choose from. So I would say don't... Um, I would say put some parameters for yourself. You know, say I'm going to look at 50 and that's it. I'm going to choose from those 50 or 10, you know, whatever. But, but give yourself some parameters around that because you will. I mean, it's endless. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure you could find a lot of information about that, but it is going to be, um, I, it is a lot personal preference again. I think whatever is most user friendly. I like to have my contact information at the very top. I like to have my menu below my banner image. You know, so it is, I don't know that that gets me any more people signing up or staying on my page or coming back, but I like to have my contact information and my social media stuff at the very top of my page. Okay, I think that was the last question. I will be around both days, and I'm going to be in the community support lounge as well tomorrow at 10 a.m., I think. So I'm always happy to help out and answer questions. Thank you very much, everybody.